So let me tell you a story first. Once there was a little girl who grew up in the countryside of Hong Kong. Her family was very poor because her father loved gambling and her father was alcoholic. Her mother left the family when she was three years old. She remembered sometimes she didn't have food to eat, even though they got money from the government. Why? Because her father gambled all the money away. She was lucky in the sense that she was very intelligent and she was very outgoing. So her teachers loved her and she had a lot of good friends. But what they didn't know was she had the horrors at home she has to face every day. Flying chairs, eating steaks, and she was often hit. What traumatized her most was she was seeing how her father strangled her sister. There was no love in her family, and she wanted to commit suicide many times. But she realized to end all this suffering is not to die, but to study, to get into university, to find a good job, and to be independent. So after many years of hard work, 10 years later, she became a financial journalist. She worked over six days a week. She worked over 10 hours a day. The financial world was her whole world. And she wanted to become the top financial journalist in Hong Kong. Despite her material success, suddenly one day, she got that unexplainable calling from Tibet. She wanted to go there, and she wanted to go alone. She didn't know why, and she didn't tell many of her friends, because she knew they would say it would be so dangerous. So she flew to Lhasa by herself at the end. Tibet was a shock to her. She remembered on the way from the airport to the city center, the very clear blue sky was opening in front of her. The air was very crisp and clean. And she saw all the stunning Tibetan style temples around her. What caught her attention most actually was the ragged Tibetan pilgrims around her. She saw they were walking towards the temple in a very special way. Instead of walking lonely, these people, every step they made, they would do a full body prostration. She thought, wow, it is such hard work. But how come they look so peaceful, so happy from their eyes? I don't understand. The deep spirituality of Tibet and the humility of its people really touch her heart very deeply. Often, she finds tears spring down her cheeks unnoticed. Later on, she was told a life-changing sentence by a traveler she met in Lhasa. Pink, if you hold on to what you have, what you have is just a little bit like this. But if you open your whole hand, all you have is the whole world. She was struck by this sentence, and she was woken up at that moment. She suddenly realized her goal was not to become a top financial journalist anymore. She wanted to explore the world. No one shared her dream at that time because it was not the time when backpacking was very common. Needless to say, a woman backpacking alone. So, after two years working more as a financial journalist, she quit her job. And I guess 
at this point, you would know that the girl in the story was me, actually. So I quit my job as a financial journalist, and I embarked on a round-the-world journey. For one year, I traveled from Ecuador to Bolivia to Peru to Brazil to Argentina, Chile, Mexico, Colombia, Cuba, all these places. I visited all the ancient Quichuan, Mayan, Inca ruins. I came through the whole Patagonia and I met so many like-minded travelers. I thought, wow, it's such a wonderful life. I would be so happy at the end of my journey by seeing all these people and eating all this exciting food and you know, visiting all these beautiful places. But actually, after eight months on the road, I started to doubt when irregularity becomes regular, my life is not exciting anymore. I felt so frustrated and I felt lost. So immediately I stopped moving around and I started volunteering in a children's home in Colombia. In that one month volunteering in that children's home, I thought in the beginning I was helping the orphans there. But actually, every day, the children kissed my face, they often hugged me, and they treated me like a real sister. They even wanted me to adopt them. So after one month of volunteering in Colombia, I realized a lesson. My traveling, my journey, was actually not so much different from the people who were buying luxurious goods at home. What is the difference is they spent all their money buying all the luxurious goods and showed off their luxurious bags, you know. But then me, I bought all their air tickets and I showed off my passport stamps and travel photos. What's the difference? And actually, we are all the same because I find out we all thought that by looking outward, by just buying the materials, we would be happy. But actually, we didn't realize this happiness could not last long. And soon, we would become unhappy and empty again. So, from this point onwards, I started to change and I started to look inward. Then, the next stop was India. India was fundamental in my journey. India taught me many lessons, including the very big lessons I'm going to share with you, which is selfless service. What is selfless service, actually? Selfless service is to offer yourself without expecting anything in return. Think about it. Not even expecting a word of thank you from other people. You just focus in contributing yourself without fantasizing what would I get from the results. I just focus doing the service for the sake of doing it. For example, I spent around five years in India and while I was in the humanitarian organization in South India, I was volunteering in the recycling department in that organization. While I was going through buckets and buckets of garbage, I was trying to fish out some recyclable material from their stinky diapers, moving worms, and hair, etc. In the beginning, my response was, oh my god, yeah. But then I reminded myself, I was supposed to be doing this in a selfless service attitude. And I remembered, before I came here, I heard all my friends were complaining about this task. They were saying, why wow, I was, wow, I'm among all this garbage. Other volunteers are doing much, much better job like baking in a bakery or being a barista in a cafe. They were soaking in all these aromatic cookies and coffee, but I'm soaking in all this smelly garbage. 
They were so bitter and so angry. While thinking about that, suddenly I started not to notice the stinky smells. I started to become very focused in my duty and the disgust slowly, slowly went away and I was absolutely absorbed in the process of recycling the garbage. So, working in the garbage stand, uh, station actually taught me a very, very big lesson. I know as far as I'm fully contributing myself in the service, I would be so happy and so peaceful and I was not thinking about to get a good sense of myself getting anything in return. I just focused in the process. And I realized this was actually selfless service. And I realized selfless service actually was a process of self-purification. Selfless service taught me to be an incense stick, to burn myself, to spread the fragrance and without asking anything in return. So I talk about selfless service, there's no way to practice, right? So afterwards, after five years in India, life gave me a very big opportunity to practice what I preach, actually. An opportunity so big that I could have never expected it an opportunity that would radically change my life forever. What is that? In 2015, I was in Nepal with my volunteers. On the 25th of April morning, I was in a bookstore in Kathmandu. While I was reading a book, I felt a very light vibration on the floor. A flash of earth idea came through my mind, but immediately I dismissed this idea and, and I continued to read. And soon, a very big trauma rolled through the whole building. Books were falling behind me, all the bookshelves were shaking around me, and even the house in front of me was shaking so much. Without any hesitation, I grabbed my bag and rushed to the door. But it was like in a rock, rocky boat and on the sea, you know? Like, I couldn't make my balance and I was really, like, swinging to the left and to the right. Luckily, finally, I reached the door and there were several customers already got stuck there. And I was thinking, oh gosh, please let us get out this door. Although I love books, but I don't want to be buried by books alive. Luckily, I went out of the bookstore. On that day, Nepal was hit by a 7.8 magnitude earthquake. 10,000 people died, 30,000 people injured, more than 300,000 people were homeless. It was a national disaster. I was the lucky one you see alive. While listening to the radio, I heard all the audios of all the survivors all around Nepal. Many people were sleeping outdoors in the cold and the rain. Many people in the remote villages had no food and no medical supplies. I was so sad listening to all this and I was thinking, what am I doing here, safe and sound and just listening to the radio and doing nothing? I need to do something. And so, while staying inside the tent with my Nepali friends, I uploaded a plea on social media. I asked for their attention and support from people all throughout the world. Two months after the earthquake, I raised more than 400,000 Hong Kong dollars. With the money raised, I went to deliver relief materials with my Nepali volunteer. After the first phase of distribution, we have distributed more than eight tons of materials. 
benefiting more than 700 families. In the second phase, we started to review schools. So, in the summer of 2015, I went back to Hong Kong. I registered a charity called Light On, and I continued my fundraising. I had raised more than 200,000 Hong Kong dollar by trekking around the Himalayas. In the two tracks I did, one of them was the Everest Base Camp. I did it with 24 days, and I did it without any guides and any walkers. And the highest point I reached was more than 5,500 meters. So, actually at this point, I feel very, very grateful of my life. My life has been so wonderful so full of rich experiences and adventures. But actually, it was not always like this. I used to, to see the happy families of other people. And I would think, I would love to be reborn into another life and have a happy family as well. I wanted to change my life. And I wanted to become the perfect me that I wanted to be. I tried so bad to be perfect in my own eyes. Until I realized, actually, I could not throw away all my unique experiences that made up my life. I could not even always control, actually, what happened. What I could do was only to accept it, to experience it, and even enjoy it. There's no other choice, I realize, but the only choice is to love my own life. After my time in India, I started to appreciate it all the unique experiences I encountered in my life. I even began to treasure all the so-called negative experiences because I find out they helped to weave the unique patterns in my life. Think about it. If there would be only one kind of experiences in your life that was the so-called positive experiences, Actually, how boring life would be, <laughs> at least for me it would be, I think. So, if you would ask me again today, think, would you love to be reborn again into another life? My answer is, even if I need to undergo all my childhood suffering again, my answer is no, because all my life experiences are so beautiful, so wonderful, and that made me today. So why would I want to change anything? I enjoy my life. And actually, life is like a kaleidoscope, and experience is the beauty of it. Thank you.